Click Dork here again. I got to tell you, being the chief data officer for a large fictional health system is not as easy as you might believe it to be. The only thing we have here more than data, my friends, is requests for data. We've got full-time staff managing a system that manages the requests for data. We've got a lot of very active internal as well as external business partners that just seem to want more, more, more. Give me data, give me data. It's a challenge for me. To enable our data pipeline to flow more effectively, I've decided to make a few changes to our fundamental architecture. I'm beginning our journey today with Attunity, which is Click's real-time data warehousing automation and managed data lake creation solution. In this initial video, we're gonna follow data and changes I make to it from our SQL Server-based OLTP system straight into Snowflake. In the coming weeks, I'm also gonna show you how we use Attunity to build an operational data lake for our data science team, as well as real-time data warehouse and data marks. Before I show you my implementation, which is only gonna take a few minutes, I wanted to share why I selected Attunity. Foremost was my ability to automate our data pipeline in a code-free manner. That was really, really important to my heart because I've just seen far too many other fictional systems where you build a mountain of technical debt trying to ma write, maintain, and manage all of the ETL code to build a more rigid data warehouse. I simply didn't want to have to deal with that here at General Hospital. The second big reason was just a fundamental architectural problem. We're making continual extracts out of our OLTP system, which simply sews physicians down. We can't have that. And as you can imagine, on a soap opera, you don't need that added drama of making people wait so that you can pull data to answer questions they asked you last month. That just doesn't make sense anymore. I need to get the querying of data separate from the input of data. Another big reason just came to, down to economy of scale. In the past, the cost per MIP really didn't bother us. We made a few extracts here and there from our mainframe, who cares? Now, as we're extracting more and more and more and trying to produce answers out of that mainframe and tie it with other data sets, we simply can't afford those costs. We needed a much more cost-effective way to make those queries out of our mainframe-based data. Perhaps most important was the fact we didn't want to make decisions based on stale data. So taking backups of our OLTP systems and restoring them to reporting databases wasn't even an option for us. We needed to be confident that we were making decisions based on up-to-the-date data values and Attunity's ability to use change data capture and move that data straight across our pipeline so that we knew we were running reports or getting our analytics out of real-time data was really important to us. Let's go ahead and get started because this is the exciting part of the thing. This is the Attunity Replicate and you notice this is a web-based system which I love. There was no software to install as a fat client on anybody's machine that needed to utilize this. And in addition, there were no client software that needed to be installed on our server. It was agentless, so that was perfect for our environment. The first thing I needed to do was create endpoints. The endpoints define my sources or my targets. And so all I had to do was create something new. What I loved was the variety of sources that I could use. Attunity provided everything I needed, both for that mainframe data I was trying to get so that we could start querying data without the cost per MIPS, as well as different OLTP sources. And sources we had systems running that were just archived. We still needed access to the data but we didn't want to have to actually keep those servers up and running, so we wanted to move some of that data off. So I created those sources, easy breezy, and then all I needed to do was create a new task. I'm going to go ahead and do this right in front of you because it literally is so easy. I'm just going to say I'm going to take my general hospital and I'm going to take it to Snowflake. The reason that I chose Snowflake as a destination, my target, was because I wanted to take advantage of the robust caching they have. I wanted my analysts who were going to be running ad hoc queries as well as predefined queries um, for reports and for analytics. Whatever their reason for accessing the data, the beautiful thing is that once that data starts getting loaded, the caching 
um, is there and things uh, go much faster. We didn't want to have to worry about reporting type systems where we predefine what we're going to do and had indexes on all our columns. Um, and we got some tremendous performance from doing this and the scale goes up, which was fantastic for us. Uh, from the compliance side, I loved the fact that they secure their data at, in transit as well as at rest. Uh, so that was a relief on my uh, on my worries uh, as well as the fact that they offered multiple levels uh, of role based access to the data um, so I was sure that our, our data was going to be secured. Um, I chose the replication it's a, it's a unidirectional I'm just taking it from our source system to Snowflake that also offered some bidirectional but we didn't need it um, for those purposes we did take advantage of the log streaming um, for some other issues where I wanted to take my source but I wanted to split it to multiple targets um, and that was a great um, benefit for us as well um, for some cases. In this case um, I'm going to do a full load. We had some systems we were just migrating data off of as I mentioned that had been archived. I wanted access to the data but I wasn't going to be changing that data. In this case our OLTP system is obviously up and running and I do want those changes to be um, replicated as they occur. That change data capture um, was a fa fantastic feature um, for us and, and we've loved having that ability. One of the other things, I'm going to turn on this store changes. What this does for us is gives us ability to create an audit trail on the fly. Um, we didn't have to change our source systems um, because we didn't want to violate any um, warranties um, on software by changing their tables or adding any um, burden to those systems. Um, but as the changes occur in our source systems and they're replicated, it's going to automatically track those changes for us. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and just turn this on. All I have to do is select my source. I want my general hospital source and I'm going to take this to Snowflake as I mentioned. That's about it for setting up the task. Now I simply have to choose my tables. And I'm going to simply say, hey, this is my schema. I can search for the tables. I could choose any of these tables individually. What we do, though, is we just move everything out of there. Um, if there were any um, tables that we didn't want, we could exclude those things. But I'm literally just going to say, hey, let's go move all these tables. Before I run this, I want to show you what we're looking at um, in terms of Snowflake. You'll notice here I have no tables here. There are no tables here yet. Um, and what I'm going to do is when I start the process, we'll come back here and start looking at those tables though. When to run, I could just start processing. I'm going to show you a couple of the other options that we used for some other cases. There were cases where we just wanted to move the metadata. I just wanted the schema um, in another location and then we did our data movement using something different um, or we just wanted to get that schema out there loaded. If there was a system that we had we were moving from a source to a target where we had already restored a backup or something you would be able to have that option. We didn't choose those options. As I mentioned earlier we didn't want that situation where we were looking at stale data. Um, we want to be able to move um, but if you have a case where you do have you know terabytes or exabytes of data um, and you already have it at another location you can say hey let me just get going in my case I'm reloading everything so I'm just gonna go ahead and press start here it's gonna take a second to get going it's gonna try to look at this data um, figure out um, what we're dealing with and then it's going to start up and it's going to take me right into um, a monitor. Um, so as soon as it finishes defining the task that it's doing, it's creating the DDL that we need and everything to build our schema. So I'm going to come back to the full load monitor here. You'll notice it's beginning to create these tables for me. I'm going to go ahead and let these things build up here for a second so that you can kind of see the volume. So some of these tables are very, very small and yet others like this procedures table have over a million records in it. Um, so although I'm, I'm trying to do this fast for a video for you, I did want to show you that there's um, some tables that have quite a bulk amount of data and you can see how it's moving these things through. 
Um, so in a few seconds, it's moving that millions of records. It shows me the progress, which I loved. If I go over to Snowflake now, I'm going to go ahead and do a refresh so that you can see that these tables that we've already um, moved have been, um, should be created over here. Press the DBO. And I've got my tables over here. Not only do I have the tables, I've got these change table versions, and we'll take a look at that in a second. Let me come back and see where we're at. It's saying that we are all complete, and it is ready for the change processing. Before I actually start making changes, let's set the scene a little bit. So I'm going to minimize this screen and show you a couple other screens that we'll be looking at while we're going through this. One of them is my SQL Server connection, and we're going to use that to actually edit data. So that's one of the screens we'll also be looking at. This was the Snowflake window. And what we'll do is we'll come over here and we'll take a look at, at data. So what I can do is we'll go ahead and see if the data actually flowed over here. If I could type correctly. I'm just going to look for the top 10 rows from this patients table because these are the ones that we'll actually be editing. So let's go ahead and take a look at these and see what we've got going on there. And if I scroll across some of these fields, the field that we're going to be looking at today is the LACE score. These things were obviously fat fingered. There's a huge problem here. We need to make these corrections. We can also see that in this ClickSense application. This thing would be a typical type of a dashboard. I might have some KPIs and some charts. And obviously, I'd want something to visually indicate when I have outliers that would catch those types of things. And that's one of the things that would be done here. And you'll notice that we have these two accounts. Both of these are hospital-acquired infections. And we can see that their LACE scores are super high. That's what we would normally do. And we can also see that we've got 38 um, urgent orders that are pending uh, to be completed. We'll be editing those as well. So we'd want to be able to see how things are done. This is the type of data we wouldn't want to be working off with stale data. That's why we need this process to be in place. So that if I've got a dashboard like this and I'm driving business off of and I'm moving patients through the hospital and trying to determine readmission potentials, I need to be looking at fresh data. So I'm going to come back here. One of the other things that we've got out here was these this change table so I want to go ahead and I want to edit this command here and we're gonna look at the change table version of this and you'll see there is no data there this is starting up there's nothing that's been changed in our database that information is also going to be available to us in click sense so these screens are going to be up while we're making the change as well um, so I'm going to try to put the screen here to where you're able to see what's going on with Attunity as I make the changes. So I'm going to come over to here and I'm going to edit this patient's table because we've discovered through some process, whether it's our analytics tool or something else, that we've fat fingered these values. We've got to make these things corrected and somebody would go into our EHR system and fix these values for us. Somewhere along the line during the day, we're also going to be working on some of these orders that are there. And we're going to take this status and we're going to say, hey, it is now completed. And we're going to also say, hey, you know what? We completed this one. And so we've made those changes here. And somewhere along the line, we want to, we're going to want to see that these urgent orders that are pending are now no longer pending and we're also going to want to see that our scores have changed. So I come back over I look at, at, at our attunity window you'll notice that it's showing me hey there's been two changes to the patients table and there's been two changes to the orders table. Which is exactly what I was hoping as I come down, before I even get to the Snowflake window, notice that ClickSense has already re been refreshed because that data has already been moved as it was captured from my SQL Server out to Snowflake. And if I come back and I change this query back and I say, hey, show me those top 10 patients again, and I look over here, you'll notice that those values have been cleaned up. And if I look at my change table version for patients, 
you'll see that I now have data. The way that Attunity Replicate generates this is it shows me the before values as well as the after values for anything that's been changed. So as I come out here, I can see that this was way off and this is what I changed it to. Here's when I changed it, who the record was for, yada, 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 all that kind of stuff, right? Which is fantastic from a governance and auditing perspective. Um, if I were to look at the orders table, you'd see the same type of change there. As I come back over to ClickSense, we already saw that in the process of trying to close the window and, and get over to where we could create the query, um, ClickSense was already updated. That is exactly the purpose again. We did not want to um, work with stale data. We've got enough craziness going on on a soap opera set without having to deal with making decisions based on day old um, or week old data. We wanted all our data in a location where we could do this type of analytics with near real time precision and that's exactly what we now have. Stay tuned with me though, this isn't the end of our story. Don't, don't think for one second we're done because we're going to be following up very shortly with a video showing you how we took that, that same change data capture and moved that data out to a data lake for our data scientists. There's a lot of projects they were working on and the excuse is constantly, hey we can't get data, we can't get data, we can't get data. We wanted data in a common location to be available for them but we needed it to be governed as well. So that's what we have did and we used Attunity Compose to do that and we also used Compose to build a data warehouse that's very agile and you're going to love seeing that as well. Hope you all had a great day. I'm ready to get back to looking at some data.